Hello, my name is Steven Lund. I'm a motion control specialist at Winter Electric Supply. I'm going to talk today about position-based digital output control with the MAOC instruction. So fundamentally, I get this question a lot, how can I control a digital output and have it be highly accurate on a machine? There's a couple of ways you can do that, but the most accurate way you can do it is using a scheduled output card. I have a demo here that has the 5069 L340 ERM PLC that is motion capable. Yet for this instruction you don't need motion capability but that's just what I have in this demo. Connected to the demo I have digital I.O. That's the 5069 IB16F and the 5069 OB16F. We're going to be focusing on the OB16F. The F designation means that this can be a scheduled output card, meaning that the MAOC instruction can actually take control of that digital output card and turn it on when you want with time synchronization. If you look inside my program here, I have V31 of Logix, and this is a program that the Motion Group here at Warner has written for your, for your use if you have an application and you need some guidance on how to do the programming. This is just a basic control one output based on the position of a, a motion axis, either physical or virtual. So I've opened up the program here, and you'll see that down at the bottom of the controller organizer, I have the two uh, digital cards added, and I have the two additional cards that are in the chassis uh, inhibited. So since we're going to be talking about the output, I'm going to open that up just to show you how that's different from a normal digital output card. So here on the, the general settings of that output card, I can click Change for Module Definition. And you can see that for the output data, I can actually, if I go offline, I can actually choose between scheduled data, data, or packed data. Scheduled data meaning that I can use the MAOC instruction to actually control the digital outputs on this digital card. So I'm going to go back online. And just to familiarize you with the, the program and the, how it's written, I have a motion program that's under a motion task. That motion task is set under a configuration of motion group execution meaning that I have, instead of a continuous or a timed execution course update rate, I'm updating this, this task at the motion group's execution, meaning that if I have an event within the motion group, it's going to trigger the execution of this task. And I have a priority of 10, which is equal to everything else. I could change that to a 9, and then this task would have a higher priority over everything else within the program. You don't have to do it this way. This is just how we've set up the program. So I'm going to exit out of that. I'm going to show you my routine here. All right, so when I open up the program of the routine here, uh, you can see on uh, line zero of the logic, I just have some screw-to-screw -screw timing between the digital input and the digital output just so I can measure how quickly the response time is. You can disregard that. Going down here, I, I have a start execution, which uh, redefines the position of the slave axes and the master axes and uh, the actual y axes because I have a master, an x, and a y axis. And I'm going to actually look at the position of the y axis to turn on a digital output based on the position of that y axis. That y axis is following my master virtual. So what I need to do in this program is initiate a jog that's just a linear jog on the master virtual. And then I'm going to actually have a cam instruction that's on the y axis that's following the linear, act, the linear incrementation of the position on the master virtual. During that time, I want a digital output to turn on at a specific time. In a, in a machine environment, this would be, say, I want to cut cheese at a specified length based on the specified amount of accumulation. I could do that uh, in real time on a physical device with this instruction. So if you look here on line or rung two, I'm going to start this execution of the program. And basically what I want to do is I want to queue up and get prepared my MAPC instruction, which is my y-axis that's following the master virtual, and my MAOC instruction. So they're both queued and ready to go, waiting for motion to occur on the other axes when I command it. So I'm going to start that, that rung of instruction. I'm going to initiate the MAPC and the MAOC. And once those are true and the instructions are true, I'm going to go to the next state of the machine. The next state of the machine is actually going to issue an MRP, which a motion rede redefined position to my master virtual and my Y axis. I'm going to set those to zero. And then I'm actually, once those are done, I'm going to jog the master virtual. So the master virtual is going to increment over time, and it's just going to be a linear incrementation. And then my MAPC on the Y axis is going to command its, its move profile. So if you want to see what I'm doing on that, that 
y-axis for the, the MAPC. We come up here to the CAM profile, and you'll see I just have some random weird profile that I just generated just by putting uh, random points in there. But you can see that I'm, based on the position of the master virtual, I'm going to be moving the y-axis in all kinds of directions. Now, to get to the point of, OK, so what does that mean about the digital outputs? How am I doing that, and what does that mean? Uh, here, you can look at the output cam of this instruction. This is the MAOC instruction. And you can see that the axis that I'm looking at for turning on this MAOC is the Y axis. And the execution target is set to 0. What that means is that when I enable execution target, targets on an axis, I start at 0 execution target, then 1, then 2, then 3, meaning that these are the actual uh, digital execution targets. Not the quantity, but like target 0, target 1, target 2, target 3. And since I've only enabled one, I'm having this MAOC instruction go to target zero, since so it's the only one that I enabled. So then I put a motion control word in there. And then my output is going to go to my local two colon output, meaning my digital output card that I selected here and actually added to the I.O. tree. My input is going to be basically uh, when this input uh, tag is true, I want to execute the MAOC instruction. So, for simplicity in this explanation, I'm just going to keep that true, and I just made a tag and put a 1 in it. Nothing fancy there. Now my output cam, I'm going to open up that window, and there's some configuration settings to put in here. I'm going to click the little uh, zoom to fit button, and you can see that based on the positions here, I have an output that goes true at position 3, and then stays true until position 4, and then goes false. That's all configured here. So my mode of execution here is I have output bit 0, meaning that this is going to control the digital physical output on the card, output 0. So if I was going to go look at the card and I was looking at output 0 and this was true, output 0 would be high between 3 and 4. My latching type is going to be position and enable, meaning that I'm looking for the position to be true and the enable bit to be true before I actually turn this output on. And my unlatching type is going to be position enable, so the same, only turn it off. Then my position that I want it to turn on is going to be 3, and my position to turn off is going to be 4. Now that's incremental relative to the position of the y-axis, meaning that when I execute this MAOC instruction, I'm going to incrementally look for uh, accumulation on the y-axis to turn this digital output on or off. It's not absolute to the y-axis, it's incremental. My duration for this particular mode, since I've chosen a left position, a right position, and latch and unlatch types, my duration is irrelevant, because it's actually going to stay on for this entire time. But you've got to put a value in there. My enable type is going to be the input, and that's that, in, uh, that input uh, tag that I said was irrelevant. I just put a 1 in there. That's the input I'm going to use. And my enable bit is 0, so I'm actually looking for this output bit to be true in order to be enabled. It's complex, but if you look in the, in the instruction set for this, or the, the help guide for this instruction set, it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So, so that's my cam editor. I'm having bit 0 turn true between position 3 and 4 incrementally relative to the y-axis. So that's all set. So now my cam start position, my end position, I'm going to start the cam at, at position 0, meaning position 0 of the y-axis, I'm going to start this cam. And then I'm going to end it at position 8. So after position 8, this can either start over again or it can just be done. For my output compensation, that's basically like an offset. Say I wanted to only turn on this cam output uh, between 0 and 8, but I actually only wanted it to start between 1 and 8 based on the different type of routine I'm running. I can update that tag on the fly to make an offset happen. And my execution mode is going to be continuous, meaning I'm going to keep running this MAOC as long as the logic rung is true. And my axis arm position for this particular thing I have as a 0.5, just so that it's easy to show how this execution can happen. You can change that number to however you want, but it's going to be reflected in the trend that I show you later. You're going to be looking for the output to turn on at, at 3 and turn off at 4. But because of my axis arm position of 0.5, it's actually going to turn on about 3.5 and turn off about 4.5. My cam arm position is 0, meaning that I'm going to arm this cam based on the position of the y-axis relative to this instruction. So I have that to 0. 
and my position reference is actual. So this is, like I said, this is all in the pre-canned uh, program that we've written. So you could really download this to your program and, and just change the values in here. It's going to be operational for you. So once I've executed these instructions and they're ready to go, I'm moving the state machine to a 10. And I'm just going to sit there and actually go to the next step, initiate the MRP on the master virtual on the y-axis, and then jog the master virtual axis. So once that master virtual axis starts jogging, this MEOC instruction and the MAPC instruction are going to be ready to go and they're going to do their job. And you'll see that in the trend that I run. Now down here on rung four, I have some limits to say that, OK, I have you MAOC instruction. You're running. You're going to be between three and four. But I want to ensure, for safety reasons, that there's no reason for the output to go true at any other time. So I basically windowed that instruction so that beyond position four or five, I'm actually going to stop. And I'm not going to execute the MAOC, and I'm not going to allow it to be enabled. That's what this is here for. So I can kind of segment, segment that instruction to keep it from running when you don't want it to. The rest of that is just uh, rest down here in the logic. The rest of this logic, rung 6 and 5, is just stopping the instruction. So to show you how this works, I'm going to open up my trend. I have the master virtual axis position. I have the y actual position. And I have the output that I'm turning on and off all trended. So I'm going to click Run on that trend. You'll see that I'm accumulating now for my virtual actual position. So all I need to do now is go back to the routine and start it. I'm going to move a 0 in the state machine so I can start from scratch. Press Start. Now you can see my y-axis actual position is starting to follow that weird cam that I made. It's going to go through one of these cams and then start over and be ready to go and give me my output. And you'll see here, down here, my white line here is my digital output turning on from 3 to 4. Well, 3.5 to 4.5. I'm going to pause that to show you after the second one, just to show you that it works. You'll see that my position on the y-axis where this output went true is about 3.53 plus or minus 0 0.03 of my mouse clicking ability error. It's turning off at about 4.5. So that's that 0.5 offset compensation I was talking about. But essentially, I'm turning on that digital output from position 3 to 4 relative to the position of the y-axis. So this is very useful for a lot of applications like uh, uh, gluing applications, um, printer heads, uh, trying to do uh, um, web handling. You can basically do this, this high speed, highly accurate digital output, enable this cut or this function or this glue relative to the position of an axis, and it's all handled in the motion planner. So it's not scan time dependent on your logic. All the data is transferred between each other with uh, time synchronization packets enclosed into the, the, the position information. So you're going to be able to have highly dynamic, highly responsive uh, digital output execution according to the motion-based event. So as you can see, this is a great way to provide highly dynamic digital output control on a motion application in relation to the motion planner execution of the PLC. So you're going to be able to alleviate any time delay or jitter on the, on the machine, and you're going to be able to execute these digital outputs in a very responsive manner. So obviously, if you have any questions regarding this or anything else, please don't hesitate to contact your Werner Electric representative.